And it's all about payup management and the Aquarius boys and we came out uh, for autism today and I want to shout you out. You are the reason that we work. Hey, you truly Kendra here. We're so live all over the world. www.bronxnet.org. I want to give a big salute to the real DJ CJ. He's in the building today and he is doing something special for the Cancer Aid Society today. So I want to give a big shout out to DJ CJ in the building. And yes, autism is, is just, we got to do this. And uh, so many things that our children do. So I wanted to shout him out and his mom. So uh, he's up today and he's playing for us today. I want to give a big shout out. Tell the folks who you are. Hi, I'm Rosemary perez Bell. I'm the Associate Director of the Strides Walks from Bronx, Brooklyn, and Queens. And the... Uh, I am Claire Francis, the Development Manager for the Making Strides Against Breast Cancer Walk of the Bronx by American Cancer Society. Okay, so today is a very special day, and uh, I want to thank you ladies for joining me uh, on Crossover Television Live. Something very special is happening today. Uh, something we, we, <laughs> Nate Moran was supposed to be in the building today because he was going to perform for you ladies, and uh, he couldn't make it today. He's out in Pennsylvania today. Mm -hmm. He got stuck out there. With the weather but uh, I want to give him a big shout out he wrote two books <laughs> and he's doing great things I want to do this um, I want to give a big shout out Sedonia <laughs> wave out to the people we're gonna go over to Sedonia and uh, she's she's doing some great work and uh, we're gonna wave her out if we can get on that set and just give her a big wave out wave Sedonia Wait, ah. you're live. Turn, turn your model around. Turn her around. Yes. Spin, yeah, spin it, girl. Spin it. Turn her around. Yes. Karen. Hi, girl. Hey, girl. She is getting hooked up. So I want to give a big shout out. Sedonia, tell the folks who you are and what you're doing over there. My name is Sedonia Kroom. I have a salon called Kroom Boutique, Bronx, New York. And I'm working on cancer clients and showing you how your wig can look instead of it looking like a hat. <laughs> uh, she was working on my hat because my hat was crazy <laughs> so she was working on my hat today but I want to do this everybody uh, we're here for a big 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 uh, reason so we're going to go back one more time CJ yeah. what you got what you I, got CJ Throw me something what you got what you doing so we're joined by the sounds of the real DJ CJ he just played for um, you was with S1 yeah. He was with S1 the other day. Yeah. He was just with S1 the other day. He played for Sickle Cell and Central Park yeah. on Saturday. So yeah. big shout out. Yes. But we are about to do it over here on this side, all right, CJ? And then I'm coming. Yeah. Yes. I'm coming. I'm coming for you, all right? Okay. We, we want we got Trinidad and Tobago in the building. They are interning with me. CJ, what you got? Don't worry, I'm gonna give y'all a little Go CJ. Sign. Go CJ. Go, can y'all help me? Go CJ. Go CJ. Go CJ. We got a live audience in the building. Go CJ. Go CJ. Go CJ. Go CJ. You know, he made a video. He was like, Mama, I made it. <laughs> I sure did. I love you, baby. All right, love so we're going to get back to the American Cancer Society. They are in the building. I want to talk to you ladies. Tell me what's going on because... October is. Tell me about it. Yeah. So October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Um, it's uh, the month where, for the most part, awareness is heightened around breast cancer and the importance of prevention and detection and screenings. Um, for us, it's um, a big deal here in the Boogie Down Bronx because we host our annual Making Strides Against Breast Cancer Walk. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, this year it's going to be Sunday, October 22nd. Uh, we're waiting Bay for y'all 8 a.m. at the Bay Plaza Shopping Center. Yeah, be there. Yes, be there. <laughs> I'll be in the building. Out the building. I'll be out there. <laughs> I'm out there. <laughs> and we welcome close to about 8,000 people. Wow. Yeah. That's the one from Can we salute them? Yeah. 
That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, it's a beautiful day, you know, where everyone comes out, everyone, because this affects everyone mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in some way, shape, or form. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess our highlight of the day is our survivor area in, in the main stage area where we, you know, provide hope, we provide support, and we give um, a, lo a lot of these women a platform to um, kind of, I guess, own, in some cases, mm -hmm. their journey, and then give someone else that um, confidence. Yes. I love it. Come in. Come on, girl. Tell me yeah. about it. So, you know, in New York, over 18,000 women are diagnosed with breast cancer. But, you know, the one thing that we realize is that um, what's not talked about is that breast cancer does affect men. So 2,710 men are also affected with breast cancer overall. So we Can definitely- say that one more time? Over 2,000 men are diagnosed with breast cancer. This year. I, this year. Have, see, I, these facts are very important. Mm -hmm. So I'm so glad you're saying that. Can you say it one more time? Over 2,000 men are diagnosed with breast cancer overall this year. And you have a breast screening for men just like for? Just like for women. Okay. Well, the, there's um, different things that can be done. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, you know, we, the, the standard is a mammogram. Yes. Mm -hmm. But men don't necessarily get mammograms. So they, they'll probably do MRIs or, or other different Tests so it's a little out more there. complicated for men? Or? It's a, it, it's a it little more be. because it, there isn't a screening standard mm -hmm. for men. It's more of if you feel something, go in and talk to your provider mm -hmm. so that then, you know, next steps can be built out for you. But um, it, it's a little different mm -hmm. than for women. For women, we know 40 and over is when you should start getting Screened. your mammograms. Mm -hmm. um, the American Cancer Society's guidelines state it's 40 and over every once a year. Okay. Um, that there are other um, national guidelines that will, you know, differentiate. But either way, um, the American Cancer Society does state it's 40 and over on mm -hmm. our guidelines, and it's very important to also know if there's a family history. Yes. Because then. Um, you might want to start a little earlier. talking to your doctors. That's what I was going to ask. Say a little bit yeah. earlier, there is history of like you know throat cancer or um, there's different forms of cancer. Some so, some have genetic components. Genetic mm -hmm. components. Um, so like for example, with breast cancer, um, now they have discovered the the BRCA gene. So they know that if if that gene is detected in someone in a family, they may if she has sisters. They, they, they may want to test them too to see if they carry the gene. And, and I know some you know, high profile individuals um, have had gotten diagnosed with breast cancer and then you see that they um, proactively have the mastectomies. Mm -hmm. So to kind of get ahead of the diagnosis right. and things like that. Um, so they, this is not necessarily the case for everyone because everyone is different. different. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, it's always good to be proactive. So if there is a family history, you, you definitely want to start talking to your provider so that it's on their radar. Okay. Okay, so uh, on either side, your mom or dad's side? Yeah. Yes, okay. that's okay. correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, that's very important what you mentioned for men. I know that um, I see had did a drop for me mm -hmm. uh, once and we were talking about colon cancer. Mm -hmm. And he basically said, check your booty. Yep. Because men don't, want to go get it done and uh, they think that it's very evasive which mm -hmm. it's not you really don't know what's even happened it's like no. you it's just very go to sleep, you, go to sleep. <laughs> you just go to sleep and you wake up and well, it's you over. may be a little gassy <laughs> you may be a little gassy the whole room is gassy but you know, nobody knows that something happened so i think it's very important so i'm so glad to finally get this show going i've been i've been wanting to do it we have to shout out coast coast tds i love you honey mm -hmm. wherever you are um um, just introducing me to some great people, and uh, we're doing some great things together. So I want to thank you, sweetheart, 
Um, for some folks that couldn't make it to today here, mm -hmm. uh, we will, we're going to get together again because October is the big walk and yes. we want to have you all back so we can be promoting the walk. Um, and you will be able to do screenings out there, right? Do you do a screening or? Well, I think for the first time this year. We will have our mam. We have a, the mammomobile. So it's the a mobile. mammogram mobile. Yep. I had this feeling. You yeah. See, I didn't ask you that, but I had this feeling. Yes. Yeah, I had a feeling because th this is the new thing now. We, like you said, we're trying to get ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. yes. So um, when they do these events, they're trying to get testings done there while they're there. Right. So that's just amazing. Yes. So, I know. So excited. Them? Yes. Yes. So excited. Really excited about that. that. Super excited. And tell me what else is going on. What's going to, yeah, what's going on? So here? to kick off the uh, Making Strides Breast Cancer so Walk of the Bronx, uh, we are having a Making Strides Survivor Fashion Show. And that is um, presented by Montefiore Einstein Cancer Center. And we are partnering with Bronx Fashion Week, where we have about 35 survivor models that will be participating as models. Um, Ms. Sedonia Chrome is one of our survival models. Wow, yes. a round of applause. <laughs> I'm gonna be talking to her in just a minute, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. And while she's styling, she's cutting and styling over there, and it's looking good over there. And ooh, I wish I was in that chair. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, because she's just really doing it. Um, and she's been 50 years in the in the the business of doing wigs and hair and celebrity. She's a celebrity stylist to me now because I mean, she's styling hair and stuff <laughs> around know. here. So, um, you know, I, I want to say thank you so much to Sedonia for what she does Indeed. and her give back in the community. Yes. Indeed. So, um, and she has an amazing story. So we will talk to her in just a few and tell her story. Yes. Okay, yes. Fashion Week. Now, this is Bronx Week, Fashion Week. We'll be talking about... Um, all kind of fashion when you do the fashion show, correct? Yeah, so the Bronze Fashion Week team um, usually has their fashion shows throughout the year. So we um, discussed about having some of the survivor models within the Bronx to highlight them because we understand during a cancer journey, the one thing that's a difficulty, so, you know, you go through different um, changes with your body, with your hair, um, it affects your self-esteem, your mood. So we want to just show the um, other survivors and thrivers out there that, you know, life doesn't stop when you hear the word cancer. You, mm -hmm. you definitely have to strive. And these are um, men and women. So, yes, we do have a male model in the Survivor wow. Fashion Show. Yes. So men and women gathering together to show um, the world, the Bronx, that we're in this together. You know, we have the statement Bronx Strong, so we definitely showcasing That's Bronx Michael Strong. That's Michael Bronx Strong. Yes. <laughs> so we yeah. want to show that there is inspiration out there that you, you know, life keeps going. Just keep pursuing um, yes, and keep being that beautiful you you are. Right. I love it. Mm -hmm. You want to add to that? Well, what... Um, what we did when we came up with the idea with Bronx Fashion Week about putting together the fashion show is that we, we reached out to our health system partners throughout the community mm -hmm. and we asked them to nominate, you know, as opposed to us selecting people. We asked them to nominate the survivors that they would like to give this opportunity to. And um, a lot of them selected uh, some very beautiful you know, men and women who are going to be participating. I can't wait. Mm -hmm. They are very, very excited yeah. <laughs> to do this. I'm coming out. I'm very excited to hear about mm -hmm. this. And I yeah. definitely want to come out and support this. And, you know, um, I have a family member with cancer. And, you know, I have that, you know, a family member come over sometimes. And my sister passed away. We didn't know she had cancer until she passed away. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, unfortunately, this is the most, Bronx is one of the most unhealthy, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. so... It's very difficult, I find, like, for black and brown to get their tests done. You know, you got to wait five, six months, and you have history, and we shouldn't have to wait that long to get a test, mm -hmm. right. uh, to get an appointment. So we have a lot of work to do, and so I'm so glad that the borough president's office is involved. Yes. Can you tell me who's involved? Because they're doing a lot of good work. So tell me who else is involved with this. So we have um, we have the delight of having our deputy borough president Janet Pereira is one of our MCs. Um, Paola Martinez, which is part of the Catholic Charities. Um, some of our local elected Bronx elected officials are 
um, partnering with us, like Council Member Kevin C. Riley, um, Assemblyman Benedetto, Senator Bailey. So they'll be also partaking in celebrating these survivors and participating in the show as well. Jumani. Yes, no. and public advocate Jumani Williams. Yes. yes, indeed. Does a lot of great work. And yes. We love him. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so I just, I love what you're doing, and I'm so proud of you, and I support you truly, support you. And Thank I you. know that you'll be doing more events um, coming up. So give me the date of the fashion show so everybody out there can just kind of like follow you out. Sure. So the so Making Stride Survivor Fashion Show is Saturday, September 30th at Bay Plaza Mall. Um, it will be at the upper level, the food court area. It starts at 4 p.m. Okay. So one more time, just to give everybody. Saturday. Get, get a pen. Hold on. Get a pen. You know, I'll tell you, for this yep. show, you need a pen and a paper. So. so it's Saturday, September 30th at Bay Plaza Mall, upstairs level at the food court area, and it starts at 4 p.m. sharp. Okay. So you want to come on out. You don't know who's going to be out there that you're going to no. bump into. Nope. And, you know, we just want to shout the folks out walking. Because walking yes. and, you know, putting your, putting this down, you know, taking it off your shoulder, mm -hmm. off your backpack, and just, like, put that backpack over there and just walk. Just just be assertive and just walk and just know. Like, and y'all y'all going to hook them up, right? Yeah, so we <laughs> have, um, thanks to the Bronx Fashion Week team, we have a great glam squad that will be taking care of the ladies. Um in beauty and hair so they're going to be stepping out and we have some local designers that um that will be coming out and dressing our models so that they can look fantastic i love it mm -hmm. so would you like to add to that would you, anything else that's uh spectacular is happening there or are you just holding a secret or you know, <laughs> i know i'm going to pass through to check it out so, i um, i might i guess what i would like to say is that you know invite everybody to come out let's support these men and women yes who are really putting their hearts out there. Mm -hmm. um, as you said, it's not easy to walk down a runway, mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's even harder to actually put your journey out there. Right. Exactly. That's what yes. they're doing, story. to tell their story. To share your story. Yes. Yes. You know, sharing your testimony, your story is one of the hardest things. We did it. Um, we've done this before. And, you know, we've had people disclose HIV on, come right here, and never told their families mm -hmm. that they were HIV positive and did it right on the air with us. Mm -hmm. So I really understand it. Mm -hmm. And um, when you're not feeling well from day to day and everybody's laughing and smiling and you're not feeling well, it's, 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 a, it's a tough thing. It sure so is. So we just want you to know that um, we support you, Crossover TV, and we support the Cancer AIDS Society and what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we want to follow you out in every endeavor that you take in the Bronx or anywhere. So now tell the folks where uh, you, Bronx, Brooklyn. Tell so the folks. I manage the Bronx, uh, Brooklyn, and Queens making strides walks because we have one in every borough. So um, for those people who walk in Central Park and in Queens, this year that will be on October 15th. Mm -hmm. Okay. And for those who walk in the Bronx, Brooklyn, and Staten Island, that will be October 22nd. Oh, okay, so they're gonna join. Okay, but that's three boroughs in. So three one boroughs. Yeah, they got it. Yeah, how we, many people is that? Like that's gotta that's be a like. Lot. That's, that's a huge. lot. That's a lot. That's like a lot of because over thirty thousand. Wow. Yeah, in one day, yeah, Central one Park day. alone brings in close to thirty, forty thousand people in one morning. Wow. So you know, it we we really provide a platform for all of New York City to advocate, mm -hmm. to support their loved ones, to come out and find that hope you know, that you may not have. Um, we, we tell people, make our event yours. That, that's what we strive for. Yeah. So it's not our it's strides, just, it's your, your strides. strides. And when we talk about the American Cancer Society, it's your American Cancer Society because mm -hmm. right. we wouldn't be here if not for right. you. Yeah. Right, right. So we're, we're following you on your journey. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know, so uh, I think that's very important that you mentioned that. And so I'm getting very excited. So you got some great sponsors too. So some of the food courts are like donating food for that. So event. we're hoping that um, we'll be able to have a nice little thank you for all of our survivors. Yeah. I love yeah. this. So we're, we're working on, you know, giving them a couple of surprises for the evening. Yeah, I love um, it. But for the day of the walk, um, we have Fever Records. Wow. Here in the Bronx. Yeah, that's Sal. Yes, Sal. Sal. Hey, Sal. Sal. We just did yeah. Sal's event. <laughs> yes. 
uh, leave the Lehman stage with yes. hip hop, 50 years of hip hop. Is he bringing somebody out for you guys? No. Sometimes well. we get a surprise. Yeah. They sometimes, you know, they'll let us know, but we have a lot of love for Sal Abatella, uh, Fever yes, Records, and amazing. the Erica Roman Foundation. Yes. Yeah. Um, they have been with us year after year um, in entertaining all of our participants. Um, my, uh, is it Montefiore Einstein Comprehensive Cancer Center yeah. has been our presenting sponsor for years as well. We have St. Barnabas Hospital. We have Bronx Care. Mm -hmm. We have all of New York City Health and Hospital sites in the Bronx. Um, we have TWU. Stop and Shop. Stop. Oh, wow. Yes. Um, we have um, Flash, CWA, food. Local 100. Mm -hmm. um, we have RICA. A lot of people from the Caribbean yeah. know they're Rika. <laughs> Trinidad is in a building. You guys know about Rika? <laughs> so they come out. Yes, yes. they come out um, and they, they provide us with stuff. We're very, very happy to have the support of NYPD Bronx, yep. you know, Patrol Borough Bronx. Yes. You know, they come out really strong. Um, and uh, we have some GMGT. new part yes. some new partners. Mm -hmm. GMGT Exciting. Live. It's a radio station that's live. Um, that it's coming out to support us to be partnering exciting, with us, exciting. and we also have Raymond Flanagan that yeah. partners with us. Exciting, yeah. Exciting. Now I'm coming. <laughs> now I'll be in the building. <laughs> I can't wait. Like I'm excited. Yeah. yeah. So I, you know, I want to see these ladies, you know, do their thing, yeah. and these gentlemen. Yes. yes. You know, the thing is that we just gotta walk with what we got. You know, today. Mm -hmm. and, you know, you don't know how you're feeling today, but. We're going to do it, right? Yes, We're going to yes. do it no matter what? Yeah. All mm -hmm. right. And we have a Bronx team that um, is called our Bronx Executive Committee team. Um, it's a committee that works along with us to put all of this together. And they'll also be partaking in the Survivor Fashion Show. And they are the, also the ones that support us behind for the community uh, in putting the walk together as well. All right. Well, I want to just say we're going to go to a break. Yes. And let's just clap for your sponsors. Yes. Thank you. We have a live audience show today. So lock your dolls, everybody. We're going to go to a break, and we'll be right back. A beloved beautician in the Belmont section of the Bronx closed the doors of her salon after more than 50 years in business after recently being diagnosed with cancer. But as News 12's Samantha Cheney shows us, some of her clients are stepping up to help her open once again. When Sedonia Kroom opened the Kroom Boutique Salon and Spa more than 50 years ago, her goal was to never miss a day of work. I wanted to be a black owned business that you there every day that they don't look up and say, oh, they're not open today. No, I'm gonna be here just like you're supposed to be every day. And up until June, she did exactly that. But when the hairstylist known in the community as Aunt Bonnie was diagnosed with colon cancer, she had no choice but to shut down. And that broken record was felt across the community. My heart completely broke when she told me what was going on, but you can hear in her voice that she's, she's just sounded like herself. When I went to the hospital, the question I kept asking them is, how long is this going to take? Because I got to get back to work. <laughs> and that fiery spirit is what her clients say they miss the most about her. Children come in here, their parents come in here, their grandparents come in here. Everybody knows Bonnie on a different level but always more than just do my hair. And today, for the first time since she closed her doors, they gathered inside the salon, but it wasn't to get their hair done. We're here not because of what she does, but because of who she is. She's like an extended family, and we just want to give back what she gave us. Last month, Bonnie began her fight against cancer with chemotherapy, but she isn't in this battle alone. 
These women are raising money through a GoFundMe to help with medical expenses and to get Bonnie back to what she loves. Bonnie says her goal is to reopen Kroom Boutique by September. And to learn more about the efforts to help the salon owner, head over to News12.com. In Belmont, Samantha Cheney, News12. We are back. Trinidad! 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 We are in the building! Trinidad is in the building today in Tobago! Hey! Hey! We're in Rocky Boy! The real DJ CJ the building, everybody! You know what it is! These are my interns today. Thank you for now, and thank you so much, Carolyn. I love you guys. They've been holding it down, enjoying TV in New York City. You know, we got the top fans in the building, so I want to do this, everybody. Thank you for joining us. We got our rags up. Where's our rags? Where's the rags? What's happened? What's going on, man? We're going to have rags next time. Well, I'm just jumping. Woo! All right. We understand Trinidad, all right? We New York City, but I want to welcome Trinidad inside the building. Thank you guys for joining us. And we got the real DJ CJ in the building. Yeah, it's Tell always. <laughs> I want to shout you out. I love you, honey. What else you got? Come on, what else you got? Represent, represent, represent. Everybody take a jump, take a jump, take a jump up now. Start a wave, start a wave. This is where you need your flag, New York City. Where we at? Cause it's carnival. Hey. We're gonna take a jump, okay? We got this? We're gonna just jump, okay? It's kind of All right, we in the building. We want to thank the Cancer Aid Society for joining us. We want to give a big shout out to Trinidad. Thank you ladies for joining me. All right, CJ, yeah. talk to me. What we doing? What we doing? All right, now CJ. Yes. You just, you just, you just bring it down. You just, you was in the park, yes. and uh, Central Park, yes. and uh, you was with DJ. DJ S1. S1. Yes. And uh, tell the folks what uh, what happened in the park. Yo, it was such a dope event because this is actually the second year I done it because I covered for him last year to do the whole thing by myself. So this year, I was actually DJing with him. What was that like? It was amazing. It was a phenomenal event. Wow. It was a phenomenal event. Central Park, we did a walk. Then after the walk, we was dancing and enjoying life. And it was just a, it was a good movement. All right. It was a good movement. I want to say you've been doing a lot. We just did the promoters ball together. Oh, yeah. We had a good time. That we was had, crazy. Um, we had Positive K. Positive K was in a building. What's your man got to do with me? I got a man, right? So, yes, we have Positive K, and mm -hmm. we have Miss Jones from the Morning Show, mm -hmm. right? And then we uh, gave out some. I uh, gave out some awards, right? Sure did. So well, y'all that missed it, y'all missed out. Shame man. on you shame guys. Shame on you. <laughs> with my camera right here. Shame on, on you. you. So I want to do this. Uh, we get out, crossover TV. You're everywhere. You have several events all you know all weekend. You've been busy. So I just want to give you a big shout out. You don't let anything stop you. Your mom, uh, Clarice. I want to give her a big shout out. Mom, um, this is the camera that we're looking at. And so I just want to shout out your mom right now and say your mom is so amazing. I talked to her on the way in the, on the car today coming over, and I let her know that you know you were good because yes. I got you. Yeah. So um, I love you, mom. Thank you for supporting every endeavor that he takes, and he takes strides, and he doesn't let. Anything stop him, no matter what's going Not, on with him. Nothing. So, nothing. I love him. He was just on a float the other day, yes, right? Yes, because I was in there on the African American Day Parade. Shout out to Local 79. I was, this is my, I think this was my third year on that float. So shout out to Local 79. And I will be back on that float next year. Woo, woo. I want to shout out. The real DJ CJ, and he is my official DJ. We came up with this, that we're going to do this, and um, I love you. I love you, too. He said, Mama, I made it. I made it, <laughs> Mama. <laughs> so we love you. So he's going to keep spinning. He, you have something very special for the Cancer Aid Society, right? And yes. they, they, they made some requests for this show so we can jam out a little bit. And what do you have for them? 
Hmm. Let's see, we want something fast. Let's do something like this to start it off. You're broken down and tired. Thank you. <laughs> this is a request. This is one of the requests that they have. And uh, we want the ladies to be enjoying themselves. I'm going to walk over to um, the ladies right now. Sedonia is styling. And uh, she's styling Karen, by the way. And so just get ready for this uh, amazing experience. She cut my bang today. Yeah, you like it? You like it? Yeah. Yeah, she cut my bang. Yes. It's, it's, it's dope, right? Okay. Yes. So Trinidad, thank you. Trinidad and Tobago. Okay, so I'm over here. Whoop, whoop. Okay, so now I'm on another set. This is the third set today. And uh, I just want to say thank you so much, Sedonia, for joining me. Tell the folks who you, you are. I'm Sedonia Croon. I am a cancer survivor and the owner of Croon Boutique Salon in the Bronx. See how well she did that? And spa. And, and spa. spa. And spa. <laughs> and I've been invited, by the way. So, <laughs> tell them about my invite. Oh, yes. We definitely invited her for me to do her hair at the salon as a part of our program. We work on cancer clients. And we also work on people with alopecia and problems with their hair. And what we try to do with the wigs is give them styles that doesn't look like a hat. Because that is what I've always heard when I went for my chemotherapy. I found that people were complaining all the time about, oh, I wish I didn't have to wear this. It looks like a hat. It looks like a hat. But they didn't know where to go or didn't know that you could mm -hmm. have it cut in style. I love you, and I love what you're doing. I love your give. Girl, give me five. I love your give back. I love, I love what she's doing. Look at how. Now, Karen, what do you, how do you feel, Karen? Gorgeous. You feel uh, right? This, right? Yeah. Well, this you, was You didn't look like this when you came up in here today. You did not look like this today, so. Yeah, this was a poofy poof, as they usually get. They usually have too much hair on the wigs, so sometimes you have to thin them out, cut them down to fit that person's face. face. So they feel like themselves. They're already beautiful, but right. now you feel beautiful and yourself. Own it. Okay. They're owning it, <laughs> right? You allow them to own it. There you go. And there I you love go. it. So when you first came in, I see a lot of trimming and cutting. Cut, yes. So you want to talk about the beginning of how it was okay. in the beginning? In the beginning, this was a big, poofy. You know how when you go and buy a wig, it's usually big and poofy and rounded. Okay, so... And so what I ended up doing was tapering it down really close in the back, taping it down short, because as you see, she has a small face, so you don't want all that poof poof hair on her, especially a wig. Right. Your own hair is different, but when it's a wig, you don't want to have it where it's puffy, so I cut it down short, because this is a style she would normally wear. You would rock this, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and I love this. And I love this. Even I can play around with this. Mm -hmm. I can still play around with this. That's and, right. And change it up anytime, it's any way oh, yeah. I like, right? You don't have to have that's it right. this way. You can run your fingers yes. through. Yes, yeah. that's take what I'm it. That is what I'm talking about. Side. Yes. You can get some of the hair yes. off your face to give it that kind of look. Yeah, I love that. Or so you now, can puff up the top. Now you like three looks in one mm -hmm. just now. You can puff up your top to give it that spiky look with I some holding spray. Or oh, you could take the comb, what they call a claw comb, and it will give you those wavy ruffles through the hair. So it's a lot amazing. you can do it. I want to do all kind of things, touch it. Mm -hmm. I can do it? Yes. Touch it? Yeah. You're going to fix it? Okay. Yes. You're going to fix it back? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And so. it's human, so oh. you can actually hot curl it. Wow. Okay. Oh, yeah, I saw the, I saw, listen, when she came in, she just went to work, and I just saw heat. I saw heat. <laughs> I like, this is amazing. It looks so beautiful. Uh -huh. Can I look? Can you turn her around? Let's turn mm -hmm. her around. Yes. Let's turn it around so Which they can way? see the back. See so the back? we cut the back so that it would be laid flat and close to the head. That was our purpose. I love it. Mm -hmm. So we're going to turn you back around. Oh, yes. Okay. We're loving it. You modeling it. You don't even got to walk, girl. Do it, girl. Do it. You just sit down and be pulled around. Yes. I love it. Yes. So uh, tell the folks. Let's tell them about your journey with cancer. Okay. You know, I said, you know, while you're styling I mean, and yes. while you're fixing. Well, we my talk. journey was when I, I, I've never been absent from my job. Ever. Wow. Okay. So, and that's because of that cliche about, you know, us folks never being at mm -hmm. work. So I never was absent. I fell out in my salon oh, doing wow. a client's hair. 
And that was my first journey. Well, because I mentally didn't know what was wrong, when I, went to, when I got to the hospital, I kept telling them, I got to go back to work. Your, fo your focus was, I just got to get back to work. Yeah, I have Never to get back to day. work. Never miss a day. Ain't going to miss no day today. I got another client. And he was saying, no, you have to go for surgery, Miss Croom. You have to go for surgery. No, no, no. Not right now. Because, you know, I got to get back <laughs> to <laughs> work. <laughs> and because of those things, I never really felt that sickness that you get in your head, that, that one that right. tells you you're sick. Right. Because the whole time I was there, I kept saying, okay, so how long is this going to take? It's going to take so I can just get myself back So I can get, feet. there you go. And that's the beauty of not thinking that way. And then I, when I got involved with being with the Cancer Society, I realized, okay, it's time for you to step up to the plate and start doing some heads. Wow. And, and, and doing what you say you can do. You say you can do wigs? Do the Show wigs on the cancer. It. Because that's the ones that's really having the problem. Yeah. And that's where this got started. How long were you when you had surgery in the process and going through chemo? How, you know, let's, can we talk about what that took out of you? And, and, um, you know, and, and not only what it took out of you, but showing up, still just showing up, even though it's taking it out of you. Do, okay. Can we talk about showing up? Well, yeah. Actually, I went back to work before they told me to. I'm sure you did. Okay. We sure you did. <laughs> <laughs> so when they were telling me, I, I went back, I was still hooked up to my chemo. Wow. Okay. So you was getting chemo. And I was, and was, was working. And I was shop, doing it. Mm -hmm. Wow. You're, can, mm -hmm. we, can we get it? <laughs> so amazing. So that's okay. how I, but because of that, I found you don't suffer all of the, you know, they gave me a list of side effects. But because I was working, I don't think I had a chance to go you through You just kept them. going. You just kept going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we have to remember to do is to not allow it to control us mm -hmm. and we control it. Don't let it sit around. You know, it's kind of like a headache. Right. You say, oh, I have a headache. I have a headache. Well, that headache just keeps getting worse and worse and worse because you keep saying it. And because it's the diagnosis mm -hmm. now, okay, now I got something, and now it's the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. So now this is what they said. This is what they said is going to happen to me. Yes. Right? Is it kind of like that? Yes. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, no. I, even when she was telling me the list, I was like, oh, I'm not going to have that. I'm not going to have that. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to have any of that. I'm not going to mm -hmm. have that. And I really believed I wasn't going to, and I didn't. Wow. That's amazing. That's mm -hmm. only that's God. You know, mm -hmm. God will get in there when <laughs> you know when we can't handle it, He gets in. And, you know, just prayer and, and um, we didn't, my, by the way, we normally pray before this show. <laughs> and that was the one, we didn't have to pray after the show because we all here together mm -hmm. and we, but you know, God is in the atmosphere mm -hmm. when they say, you know, mm -hmm. you know, we're here, yeah. he's here. Yeah. So um, that's a blessing. We have yeah. to make sure that, we you know, we let people know. And I love mm -hmm. this walk, the uh, American Cancer yes. Society. I love the walk and the fashion show because mm -hmm. now people are coming together. Yes. And they're um, able to feel beautiful. You are, you guys Thank are hooking them up. Yes. They're able to walk, feel good. Mm -hmm. And we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. Thank but you. we know what today. Thanks. We know today. on the 30th, on the 30th, <laughs> we know what that day will bring for them. Mm -hmm. so and it makes you, you feel so good. Yes. It Thank does. Thank you all so much mm -hmm. um, from the American Cancer Society. Let's clap one more time for them. <laughs> <laughs> and now, Sedonia, I want to talk about this because now you are a black-owned business. Yes, I am. And you have been in your neighborhood for how many years? Over 50 years. Wow. For over 50 years I've that been That deserves there. like a salute. So yes. Let, let me salute you. Can I salute? <laughs> yes. Let me salute you. I'm going to salute you. Okay, that deserves mm -hmm. a salute. Yes. And I just want to say, uh, where are you located? I'm located in the Bronx or on Tremont Avenue in Cretona. And tell the folks the name of your business once The name is Croom Boutique Salon and Spa Business. Okay. Yes. Say it one more time. Croom Boutique Salon and Spa. All right. Okay. Come over here a little bit. Mm -hmm. I just want people to remember and know who you are. Okay. Now, <laughs> because uh, you're a very special person. And uh, not because you're doing my hair. <laughs> then let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. This, what's happening in this building today is so important to me. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you look around this room and this audience, um, we got some special people coming in here, doing some special things. Is something here that's special? Did something just arrive? Great. So I wanna, um, I wanna shout out an individual. Mm -hmm. I wanna tell you what's gonna happen right now. Okay. I think I can tell you now, okay? Okay. It was a surprise. So I wanna um, shout out the Hip Hop 
celebrity chef, Dr. He's in the building. Yes, he's catered in food for all of you all today, Aww. and the audience. Oh, for the American Cancer Society, huh? and um, I, I think this is very important at all times that we remember that it's all about the give back, mm -hmm. because no matter what we're going through, and you know I go through it, people. Mm -hmm. You see me out there. When you don't see me for a minute on Facebook or Instagram, you know I'm going through it. But that doesn't stop me from every phone call that I answer when it's a, a call for help. Yeah. And when we help, mm. it helps help us. us. So can we say when we help, it helps us? When, when we, we help, help, it helps us. us. All right? So that's what the give back is mm. all about. And by the grace of God, he just a we're able. You know, mm -hmm. we're able to do it. So we have a uh, celebrity chef. Yeah, he's waking his way in the building. <laughs> and he has some dishes that's amazing. And the one thing I love about him, well, he cooks for all the celebrities. Any okay. celebrity you can think of, he cooks yeah. for them. Oh, God. And it's for you guys today. Ooh. So you might want to play a track. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, maybe I could get him to rap because he also raps. Oh. And so yeah. um, I'm super excited. Um, Nate the Mind was supposed to be here. He got, couldn't make it. Uh. But he wanted to do... What was the song he, Nate was going to do that I had you pull up? Mm -hmm. Can you pull that up for me? Can you play it? Because maybe we could get the sentiment of mm -hmm. Nate the Mime. He's a celebrity mime. Mm -hmm. And uh, he just did Rock the Bells, which is about to come out. Rock okay. the Bells. Okay. And he was with MC Light. And every celebrity you can think of, he mm -hmm. was with them. Okay. Yeah. So I want to give a big, big shout out to some folks in this building doing great things. <laughs> so the celebrity chef is making his way in the building. Okay. And um, I think I can invite him right over. I think I might be able to invite I him right know. over. Okay. Yeah, he's making his way in the building. I'm very honored to have him in the building today uh, on Crossover TV Live mm -hmm. with Kendra. And um, you've seen him everywhere. Mm -hmm. You might not even know it, but this is... Go around the other way, chef. Chef, go that way. Yep. And um, thank you, chef. For joining me, come on, chef. Ah. Celebrity chef. <laughs> Woo! You got some music. What you got? What you got? Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. You with me right now? You with DJ CJ? Yeah. What's up? Yeah. I'm very emotional right now. We're here to be emotional. Can I hold your hand? Thank you. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, we wanted to do something special, so I wanted to surprise these ladies. I just told them because I knew I saw the guys coming in, and I saw you coming. So I wanted to surprise them, and you did something very special. Can we tell them what we did for the Cancer Aid Society for the women in the studio? We have Trinidad and Tobago visiting us today. Nate, Nate the Mime was supposed to perform this song for us. So um, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to let the chef tell you exactly who he is. And um, we're going to try to get him mic'd up. He'll be right back, but I want you to see who this is. And this is my celebrity chef, the hip-hop chef. DR, he's in the building, and he made a special meal, and he'll be back. I'll finish talking to Sedonia, and he'll be right back, right? God bless you, Chef. God bless, Chef. <laughs> Turn it up. Give me a little blaze. Give him a blaze. Very emotional. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Cut. Hit, hit. Hey, everybody. It's your Shirley Kendra from, and I tell you, it's iconic here tonight. We're celebrating Sparky D's birthday. And I tell you what, I ran into. I am Ralph Carter. How are you? Love to everyone. I wish you only the best with everything you do. And thank you for watching us on Good Times. Thank you so much. Good Times. Anytime you need a play, man. Good Times. Thank you so much. I wish you love. I wish you health and perseverance. And listen, if you have not got the hallelujah fragrance, something's wrong. We're in the building. Yeah. Cross over TV. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
About the American Cancer Society in the building. Um, hold on. Mm-hmm. Hold on. You don't understand. Y'all don't understand what's going on. Mm-hmm. So we got the celebrity hip hop chef in the building. You gotta take take my name down. Uh, put, no, no. Uh, there we go. There you go. I don't need my name up here. I just need y'all to know what's happening right now in my belly. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. We got the celebrity hip hop chef in the building. And Chef DR is in the building. I tell you, we got DJ CJ's on the one and twos. I don't know. This show might be over right now. I don't even know. <laughs> but I want to do this. I want to give a give a big round of applause. Woo! Woo! I really wish that camera could rotate to see everybody. Um, the American Cancer Society is in the building. And um, all I see is smacking, because we all just smacking right now. <laughs> so we'll be up at the end of the show. We'll be talking. Oh my what, CJ? Bless your mama. <laughs> <laughs> That's DJ CJ. So I want to do this. I want to thank you guys for, um, for uh, allowing this to happen in the building today. Thank you all for coming up. And I want to thank, give the round of applause to um, my top, top chef. Chef DR is in the building, everybody. Yeah. I want to thank you so much for making this possible. All right. So, um... <clears throat> Tell me what I'm eating, cause I'm I'm it's going down. More often now than always from before, it's a seafood stuffed sweet potato. Yep. And it consists of cabbage. You have collard greens in mm. there. You have spinach in there. You have mac and cheese in there, and then you have your seafood, your lobster, mm-hmm. shrimp, crab, and salmon. All pureed together. Lobster. And then One I, more time. Lobster. Shrimp, salmon, and crab. Mm. The shrimp. And then on top, mm. I put my sweet plantains and then my authentic garlic butter sauce. And that's how we do the seafood stuffed sweet potato. And it's a whole dish. It's a whole dish. I was confused. Now, talking about the cornbread, because it's, it's serious right now. Talking about this cornbread. Yeah, yeah they, 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 they dance with the cornbread. Um, this is sea moss elderberry whole wheat cornbread that you guys just ate. There's no dairy, no added sugar inside. This is a health choice that I, that I choose for myself, so that's how I give it to the people. I can make it 40 different ways, but it's all natural herbs and grains, so it's nothing out of a supermarket or a, a superstore. Wow. Can we salute him one more time? <laughs> Not only um, is it good, but it's healthy. And I, I want to um, talk to him for a minute because we were talking about different reasons. And why, why did you start cooking? When did you start cooking? Um, I was a young lad, young pup, young man um, coming up. But the family that burned, my family really get busy. And, you know, transitioning young man from Harlem, you know, you leave the house a little sooner than, you, you know, your parents want you to. So you kind of kind of fend for yourself. And then you go by your family, friend's house, your friend's house, your lady house or something, and instead of buying it, I was young and I would like to get in there and experiment and start cooking. How many brothers and sisters did you have? Um, I have quite a few stepbrothers and I have a sister named Janae. Okay, so you got these sister, one sister, and she probably said, you out there cooking, what you doing? You with mama and them? Yeah, she probably my, said, my you with mama and them? Oh. We all get busy. Y'all all get down I, in the I kitchen? I do it professionally, but everybody. Wow, look at all that. Look at all that. Everybody get busy. This is why I'm talking. Give them a round of applause. Look at all that. Look at all that. Look at all that. This is how you come out. Yes. And uh, I want to do this. You know, we're looking at your slide right now. And uh, I just want to do this. I want to thank you. And, you know, what you're doing, you might be, with all of this, you might be showing people how to eat different. And, and I don't know when and where that came about, but maybe you'll tell me, why did you go to the very variation of just being healthy when you're cooking. And what's in the cornbread? One more time. Okay, the cornbread is sea moss, elderberry, flex seeds, whole wheat. You have um, you have a little bit of cinnamon powder there 
and you also have the mango, the strawberry, the banana, you have your natural fruits in there. And then I, heard, then I also add fresh grains. Right. So you have puree, cilantro in there as well inside mm -hmm. the cornbread. Right, because I haven't had, I'm a diabetic, so I haven't had cornbread in a while. Because I'm like, I used to, you know, I'm accustomed to eating the cornbread with a touch of sugar. So, you know, I don't want to put the sugar. So right. I'm trying to do a little bit better. So and make it good. You couldn't tell that it's not no. sweet and, and Yes, yes. You know? So that's the difference. So I just wanted to talk about what made you decide that you were going to create this, no matter what, it's going to be healthy. It's going to be good food that you're giving the people in the way. Where do you shop? For me... You said no stop and shop, right? Not for catering. Okay. Because when you spend in your, what, what consists of is two different worlds in catering. Um, as I think that we know, you can get fast food catering, meaning that you can get it from whatever high end place you want, whatever the name of it is, or a restaurant. It's fast food catering, meaning the foods are modified, you know, pesticide, however it is from the supermarket. There's nothing you can do, it's how it's shopping. It's a cheaper way of buying the food to make the money. For me, I do the butcher, I do the natural products, I go to the farmer's market, you know, things of that nature, so everything is nice and fresh and natural. I go fishing. If I'm not gonna go fishing and get it out to see fresh as you can get it, wow. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna fishing? Go, yes, my Lord. God. I'm gonna go yes, and Lord. actually, you know, to the farmer's market and get my fish fresh as it comes. So it's nothing added to it. You go to a butcher, you don't have to worry about all the stuff that they put on the foods the pesticides and the modifications, all the sprays and all the grains that they put in your food. If you go get it from a butcher, you don't have to worry about it, you remove it. But it costs a lot more for you, so then you have to charge the customer a lot more, but if they understand that you have a passion for health and wealth, they wouldn't mind doing it. Thank you. So I know you're coming back, and when you yes. come back, I know we're gonna, we're gonna do some cooking, we're gonna do some prepping right here in BronxNet. So okay. it's gonna be like a celebrity chef show. Well, it's your show, it'll be your show. Okay. I you coming and, back to do your show? I come and burn something okay. for us. All right. Have it's a great be, time. We're coming back to do your show. Okay. Right? Make do sure you know. It. Yes, Lord. Okay. Yes. Yes. We're doing it. So, um, so this right here, I mean, y'all just don't understand what's going down right now. Mm. If you only understood, I'm, I got, I had to take a shot. I knew you were coming, mm. so I took a shot. I had my insulin today. Mm -mm. Yeah, me too. Trust you, me. And you want to share that? You want to share that the diabetes? Um, no big deal. I kind of tell my story to help one or whoever I can. Um, everybody knows me from back in the days. I was a big guy. And, um, I was that way probably more than half my life. And as I got diagnosed with diabetes, didn't realize I had it for years. And as I got diagnosed, you know, it eats up your insides the entire time you have it. If you catch it early enough, you know, you might be pre-diabetic pre or you're diabetic. For me, I probably had it five or six, seven years, and not knowing, know. not, you know, not checking on myself as, as often as I should. I'm running and ripping, doing things that maybe I shouldn't have been. And by the time I caught up with it, it was already to that point. Right. So, and what we know about health is mental as well. Mm -hmm. You can have yeah. something for a long time and be okay. Mm -hmm. The day that you find out, that's the, the day, day that life, 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 life changes. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened for me. You know, I was okay, God, obviously, eating and drinking, you know, from the Kool-Aid to the ice creams. And the time that I found it out, it was no whole bar. And I also lost over 100 pounds, which is a good thing, because you never know what life entails if I you wanna, don't lose the weight. I want to say one more thing. This is a very big thing. Yes, Lord. What was your sugar, your highest sugar? 650. 650, 700, right? Yeah. And what was your highest A1C? 16. And he's still here. And I was, that's, I was that, walking dead. That's amazing. Amazing. Now, I, if, my, if Chris Norwood only knew this, but at one point, my A1C was 11. Mm -hmm. And that is like crazy. So when you tell me yours, one more time. 16. 16. So, you know, it's just a pleasure to be having you on the show because you. I'm glad you're sharing this. I share my story. We're going to get over here. We're going to prep. And we're going to talk about how you see food differently. And okay. when you see food differently, you make it differently. You cater differently. Correct. You care about the people you're feeding, you're serving. So this is very important. Now, this, if you had to just can tell me about yourself from, from, from rap to your clothing line. Talk, talk cigars. You have a cigar. Tell me everything about you in five minutes. 
um, that would be virtually impossible. <laughs> Let's give it a shot. Give it a shot. Give it one shot. I can go through, yes, I do have an independent cigar line that I started with the Cigar Boys um, and transitioned to my independent brand. This is going all over, maybe over six years. Legitimate um, firearms and tobacco. Um, I am a hip hop artist. I am the hip hop chef. I have a double project that I'll be coming out with at the top of the year, which is hip hop for those 50th anniversary hip hop. There's no age on music. And then I also write R&B music as well, but I don't sing, so I have references. Um, I have my catering company that I've had for a substantial amount of time. I'm a corporate chef from the times in my past that everybody knows my social media, probably the work that probably all the corporations there is, Fortune 500s, all the way down to owning my own restaurant, going into the grocery store business, going into the, you know, the nightclub business, um, you know, party promotion, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. I kind of touched on a little bit of everything. Right. Just, to, just for trial and error. But now it. I'm at the point where I'm the celebrity chef. I'm looking forward to working on my show. Um, you know, networking that, brand chef franchising my show. And then I also have some products and brands that I'm coming out with soon as well. Will you come back here when you decide everything that you bring? Will you just come back here and see me? Yes, I will. So that we could do this together? Yes, we will. You get it out there? And I okay. promise to my television views and my people I will be rested a little more than now. This no, is no, a, no. You don't understand what job. he's going through today, but he still came out and he did this thing for us. And the health is a serious thing. And so I just want to thank you for joining us today on Crossover TV Live with Kendra. And um, all the people here, they really have something to say to you. So we're going to close out with... The uh, people here have something to say to me? Yeah, they do. And we're going to close out with um, the Cancer Aid Society. Trinidad is in the building. <laughs> Trinidad and Tobago. Yes, my Caribbean people. <laughs> yes. And um, they know about this, this, this good food, so we're going to talk about it. And uh, are we ready to go to the second set? So DJ, um, the real DJ CJ is going to spend something for me, and we're going to go over to the second set. I want to thank uh, everyone for joining me today. The Cancer Aid Society is in the building. I want to thank so much... Sedonia, she's going to tell us more. She's going to close us out with where you can visit her at her shop and um, her spa. Sorry, excuse me. You do not say shop. You say spa. All right. Spa. So we're going to join her at the spa. I'm going to go and get uh, my hair done and make this thing work. And um, so uh, lock your dolls. Get ready right now. We're going to go over to the last set and we're going to close out. So thank you for joining us. Crossover TV Live. I want to thank you, Chef DR, thank in the you. building. something for us just a shout out trinidad and tobago okay, the caribbean you know we all cross over that's where we used to start out at 93.5 fn so here we go we're closing out we want to say thank you for joining us crossover tv live it's the one you get baby let's go Thank <laughs> you.